Hey there, this is a Sinjo for one more Dragon's Crown video. There won't be an abridged version of this one because this is the most important of my videos and these words need to be said. This video will cover the true game of Dragon's Crown, which is cooking. For those that are not aware, Dragon's Crown is actually a cooking game with a robust dungeon crawling side game attached to it. So literally disregard all the other videos I made because this is the one that actually matters. In this video, we will talk about the general how-tos of cooking, we'll go over the stat points associated with the food, spices, pots, and pans, and most importantly, we'll be going over cooking etiquette. Yes, etiquette, because even in the cooking wild wild west, there needs to be some sort of standards. For starters, when does cooking happen? In the story dungeons that are not Labyrinth of Chaos and Tower of Mirages, you will make camp for cooking every time you clear Ghost Ship Cove, Old Capital, or ancient temple ruins. All three of those camps have their own food patterns that will be reused randomly in Labyrinth of Chaos and Tower of Mirages. In story dungeons, any bosses you fight leading up to a cooking session will be added to your food spread by replacing some other food. For example, if you start at Bilberon and camp after the ancient temple ruins, you will get access to the Minotaur Tongue and the Harpy Eggs if you defeat them on the way. Needless to say, boss foods give you the best stats in any food spread. There are also some instances where routes and certain actions can also change up your food in a pattern. For example, if you finish Route B and fight the Red Dragon, your bottom left food will be Salted Pork. But if you go Route A for the Wyvern, you have to fight these Barracudas in shallow water, so Barracuda Steak replaces Salted Pork. As for Labyrinth of Chaos and Tower of Mirages, you can get a cooking session every three floors cleared based on the host progression. With Labyrinth of Chaos in particular, you get a cooking session every three subfloors regardless of where you start. If you start on a Demon King floor which only has one subfloor such as 9-1, you'll camp for food after 10-2. As mentioned moments ago, your food pattern will be one of the main three patterns selected at random. According to the Dragon's Crown wiki, the patterns will change three times before repeating themselves. Unfortunately, unlike the story dungeons, you cannot get boss food in any food pattern. You can only work with the three base patterns. Next, we'll run through an overview of the cooking process. You got two pots for boiling food. You got two pans for frying food. We'll get into the details of this later. You got a spread of food to select from and spices to use when cooking your dishes. You will have up to four plates for each player with their associated icon at the top of the screen above their plate. It's easy to put your food in the wrong place in all of the cooking chaos, so keep up with your icon. When you cook, you want to pick the food you want, put it in a pot or a pan, and if you want better stats on cooked food, try to add one of each spice. When food is cooking, there will be an icon to take your food out and an icon to stir. Everyone has access to these buttons. This is a major fact we will discuss in enthused detail in our cooking etiquette portion of this video. Next, you're going to want to stir your food to speed up the overall cooking process. Two stirs will finish cooking a dish immediately. You'll know the food is done when it looks like this. Fully cooked food will only have the serve icon, and clicking the button will turn your icon into a ladle that you can use to serve the food. You want to get that shit on a plate or a friend's plate as soon as possible to avoid it from burning and losing most of the stats you cooked into said food. In addition, this ain't dinner at your grandmama's house, so mash that button as fast as you can to eat your stats and cook more food to redo the process. The true game of Dragon's Crown is very important because it heavily enhances the dungeon crawl side game we put so many hours into. Eating your cooked cuisine will give you temporary HP up to 999 increase attack and defense, and give you a boost to your score, all of which will be extremely helpful in further dungeon crawling, especially in the late game. Unlike snacks you find in dungeon that cap how much temporary HP you can get, cooked food doesn't care and can max out your HP regardless of your equipment or your common skills. It all depends on how well you cook and how much you eat. The attack and defense boost that you get from food can be very powerful depending on the food you choose and how well you spice them. If you're running the general story dungeons that gives you access to the boss foods, you can have an easy time boosting your attack and defense without too much effort. Even in Labyrinth of Chaos and Tower of Mirages where boss foods don't exist, if you're efficient enough, you can get strong attack and defense values that will greatly improve your survivability. 
Focusing on boosting your score is very valuable as well because it can make it easier for you to get extends which raise your life points and can proc some strong equipment effects if you have them. Plus, more score means more experience so if you're trying to level your characters, cooking will help. So the great thing about camp food is that no matter what food you choose, you're still going to get some type of temporary boost to HP, attack, defense, and your score. From here on is where the existential crisis will be had by some. You may have to choose which foods you will want to cook and whether you want to use a pot or a pan. Every food item has their own base stat values, and both pots and pans can give you different stat results depending on what food went in there. For a quick example, if you cook a chicken leg in a pan without spices, you will get 2% boost to attack and a 4% boost to your defense. If you cook the chicken legs in a pot, minus any of the spices, you'll get the opposite, which is a 4% boost to your attack and a 2% boost to your defense. Also, if you're playing with others, you may have to make do with whatever is available at the moment if you're not fast enough to get the food and the cooking item of your choosing. Besides the stats, each food has its own cook time, burn time, and respawn time. The cook time is how long it takes for food to cook without stirring. The burn time is how long until a food burns after it's fully cooked. And the respawn time is the amount of time it takes for food to respawn after it's put in a pot or a pan. A quick note about spices. Each spice acts as a boost to your food's stat rewards when you eat them. The boost ranges between 1.1 to 1.4 times whatever your food's stats are. The stat boost varies from spice to food, but we will get into the numbers soon. You can stack all three spices for the extra stat boost, but each spice boost only works once per food. So you can salt the shit out of the chicken if you like, but you'll only get the stat bonus the first time. Okay then, it's now time for us to discuss the most important part of cooking, which is etiquette. This is going to be relatively straightforward. If you're playing with other people, there are two major types of cooking styles that I've experienced. There's the Wild Wild West and the family potluck styles of cooking. With the Wild Wild West, everything in the spread and spices are up for grabs. Survival of the fittest, anything goes, until someone puts something in a pot or pan, then it's that person's real estate that should not be tampered with under any circumstances. Not only is it a dick move to steal a comrade's food that they battled over, just messing with someone else's food can mess up their cooking cadence and timing and can be hella frustrating. Even someone being helpful in putting food in someone else's plate can mess with their cooking cadence and can lead to them burning food because they weren't ready to eat that extra plated food. The TLDR on this cooking style, if you didn't put food in that pot or pan, you don't touch that shit. Everything else is free game. For the family potluck style of cooking, it's the exact opposite. Everyone works together so everyone gets fed. This is the most efficient way to cook with other people because ideally everyone puts in food with each pot and pan and everyone works together to spice each meal one at a time. This way all three spices can be put in a meal all at once instead of everyone fighting over spices and slowing everything down. It makes much more efficient use of the spices giving them a better respawn rate overall. This is definitely a cooking method that you can only do with people you know. Regardless of which cooking style you prefer, just remember to keep your hands out of other people's pots and pans when playing with randoms. And try to be on the same page as your friends, unless you're trying to troll them, then everybody get into the pit. Because that spells anarchy. Originally, this video was going to use numbers for food stats and spice modifiers found in the Cooking Recipe Guide by Michael XC, found on GameFAQs. But I realized that after some updates and a port to PS4, a lot of the stat numbers are outdated and I had to find all of that info manually. I still have the link to Michael XC's guide because it's still an incredible resource for Dragon's Crown cooking. This is the guide that I have always used when trying to figure out what food I wanted to snag at camp. As for the spice mods, I tested out each spice for every food on the old capital food pattern and all of the numbers were the same as Michael XC's guide. So. I'm assuming the spice mods for the other two food patterns remain unchanged. If anyone knows if any of the spice mods are out of date, please let us know in the comments. As for the food cook, burn, and respawn time, I had to record all of those myself so you won't find those in Michael XC's guide. All the times are approximate, because if I tried to get them all down to the decimal, I'd never finish this video. Just a disclaimer for the people who will inevitably quibble with me on time accuracy. In this next part, 
It will show you all the stat values and spice modifiers for all three food patterns as well as the cook time, burn time, and respawn time for each food. As a reminder, we will be following the Game Facts guide by Michael XC, as I mentioned earlier, so we will be listing food from left to right and top to bottom, starting with the Ghost Ship Co. food pattern. Salamanders in a pan gives 10% HP, 1% to attack and defense, and 1% to score. In a pot gives 8% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time of 12 seconds, food burn time 11 seconds, and food respawn time 12 seconds. With spice modifiers, you get a 1.3 times multiplier on each spice, capping out at 1.9 times your meal's overall stat value. Next, Barracuda Steak. In a pan gives 10% HP, 4% to attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. In a pot gives 10% HP, 2% attack, 4% to defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 18 seconds, burn time, 7 seconds, and food respawn time, 25 seconds. For spice multipliers, salt gives 1.2 times, Scarlet gives 1.4 times, and Wine gives 1.2 times overall stat boost, collectively capping out your spice boost at 1.8 times your meal's overall set value. The Herrings, aka Whole Fish, in a pan gives 8% to HP, 2% to attack, 1% to defense, and 1% to score. In a pot gives 8% to HP, 1% to attack and defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time 13 seconds, food burn time 11 seconds, and food respawn time 12 seconds. As for spice modifiers, salt is 1.4 times, and garlic and wine are 1.2 times your overall stat bonuses, capping out at 1.8. Mussels with the closed shells in a pan gives 10% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. In a pot gives 10% HP. 2% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time is 17 seconds, food burn time is 7 seconds, and food respawn time is 25 seconds. With the spice multipliers, salt and garlic both give 1.2 times, and wine is 1.4 times your overall stat value, capping out at 1.8 for all three spices. The oysters in a pan give 6% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 3% to score. In a pot, it gives 8% HP, 2% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time is 12 seconds, burn time 11 seconds, and food respawn time is 25 seconds. With the spices, salt is 1.2 times, while garlic and wine are both 1.2 three times boost to your food's overall stats, capping out at 1.8. With lobster in a pan, you get 6% to HP, 2% to attack and defense, and 3% to score. In a pot, it gives 8% HP, 3% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 17 seconds, burn time, 7 seconds, and respawn time is 25 seconds. All three spices give a 1.2 times boost to your overall food stats, capping out at 1.6. Ham in a pan gives 10% HP, 2% to attack and defense, and 2% to score. In a pot gives 8% HP, 1% attack, 3% defense, and 1% to score. Full cooking time, 15 seconds, burn time is 11 seconds, and respawn time of 12 seconds. All three spices add 1.3 times to your food's overall stats, capping out at 1.9. The hair that is hanging, not to be confused with the killer rabbit, in a pan gives 8% to HP, 2% to attack, 3% to defense, and 2% to score. In a pot gives 8% HP, 3% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 18 seconds, burn time, 7 seconds and food respawn time is 25 seconds. With the spices, salt and wine are both 1.2 times, and the garlic being 1.4 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 
The next four are boss foods that you can only get in the story dungeons. The Gazer Eyes, which replace a Salamander, in a pan gives 8% HP, 4% attack, 2% defense, and 8% to score. In a pot, it gives 8% to HP, 2% to attack, 4% to defense, and 8% to score. Full cooking time of 24 seconds, burn time of 5 seconds, and respawn time of a whole 42 seconds. With spices, salt and wine are 1.2 times, and garlic is a 1.4 times boost to your meals overall stat values capping out at 1.8. The killer rabbit, which sits on the ground, replaces the hanging hair. In a pan gives 14% HP, 2% attack, 5% defense, and 4% to score. In a pot gives 14% HP, 5% to attack, 2% to defense, and 4% to score. Full cooking time of 24 seconds, food burn time 5 seconds, and food respawn time of 67 seconds. For spices, salt and garlic are both 1.2 times, and wine is a 1.4 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.8. The chimera meat that looks like a ball of brain replaces the ham. In a pan gives 20% HP, 6% to attack, 2% to defense, and 4% to score. In a pot, it gives 20% HP, 2% attack, 6% defense, and 5% to score. Full cooking time, 17 seconds, food burn time, 7 seconds, and food respawn time, a whole 67 seconds. With spices, salt and wine are 1.2 times, and garlic is a 1.4 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.8. The crack and tentacles replace the lobster on the food spread. In a pan gives 20% HP, 3% attack, 7% to defense, and 4% to score. In a pot gives 20% HP, 7% to attack. 3% to defense, and 4% to your score. Full cooking time, 24 seconds, and food burn time, 5 seconds, and respawn time of 67 seconds. All three spices give a 1.2 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.6. In the Ghost Ship Cove general food spread, the Barracuda Steak is one of the best raw stat choices for attack or defense depending on if you choose pot or pan. If you're looking for score, Oysters and Lobster have the best overall score stat. In the boss spread, your best overall raw stat choice is going to be Kraken Tentacles, as they have the best HP, attack, and defense boost depending on pot or pan. If you're more focused on boosting your score, then you're going to want to look for the Gazer Eyes, because they do have a strong boost for the score stat. Now we're going to go through the Ancient Temple Ruins food pattern, listing foods from left to right and top to bottom. With bats, cooking in a pan will net you 6% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 6% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 6% HP, 2% attack, 1% defense, and 6% to score. Full cooking time, 16 seconds. Burn time, 7 seconds. And food respawn time, 25 seconds. With the condiments, salt and wine are both 1.2 times, and spices, 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values capping out at 1.5. Snails, when cooked in a pan, will net you 8% HP, 1% to attack and defense, and 3% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 10% HP, 1% attack and defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 12 seconds. Food burn time, 11 seconds. And respawn time, 25 seconds. With condiments, Salt and wine are both 1.3 times, and spices 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. The boar meat, when cooked in a pan, will net you 12% HP, 2% attack, 3% defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 12% HP, 3% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. Well, cooking time 16 seconds, burn time 7 seconds, and respawn time of 25 seconds. For condiments, salt is 1.2 times, wine is 1.4 times, and the spices are 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. When cooking peas in a pan, it will net you 10% HP, 2% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. 
Cooking in a pot will net you 8% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 3% tier score. Well, cooking time, 16 seconds, burn time, 7 seconds, and food respawn time of 25 seconds. For condiments, salt is 1.4 times, wine is 1.2 times, and spices are 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. With carrots, cooking in a pan will net you 8% HP, 2% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 10% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 1% to score. Full cooking time, 12 seconds, burn time, 11 seconds, and food respawn time, 12 seconds. With condiments, salt and wine are both 1.3 times, and the spices 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Onions cooked in a pan will give you 10% HP, 1% to attack and defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will give you 8% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time 12 seconds, food burn time of 11 seconds, and a respawn time of 12 seconds. With condiments, salt and wine are both 1.3 times, and spices are a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Lettuce cooked in a pan will give you 10% HP, 2% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will give you 10% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 16 seconds. Food burn time 11 seconds, and food respawn time of 12 seconds. With condiments, salt and wine are both a 1.3 times, and spices are a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. The snake cooked in a pan will net you 8% HP, 3% attack, 2% defense, and 1% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 8% HP, 2% to attack and defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 18 seconds, burn time is 7 seconds, and respawn time is 25 seconds. With the condiments, salt and wine are both 1.2 times, and the spices are a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.5. The next two are boss foods only found in story mode dungeons after defeating said boss. The minotaur tongue replaces the boar meat in the spread. Cooking with a pan will net you 20% HP, 7% to attack, 2% to defense, and 4% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 20% HP, 2% to attack, 7% to defense, and 4% to score. Full cooking time 24 seconds, burn time 5 seconds, and respawn time 50 seconds. With condiments, salt is 1.2 times, wine is 1.4 times, and the spices are a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. The harpy eggs replace the snakes. Cooking with a pan will net you 20% HP, 1% to attack, 4% to defense, and 4% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 20% HP, 4% attack, 1% defense, and 4% to score. Full cooking time, 24 seconds. Food burn time 5 seconds, and food respawn time of 42 seconds. With condiments, salt is 1.4 times, wine is 1.2 times, and spices are 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. In the ancient temple ruins general food spread, the boar meat is your best bet for HP, attack, and defense, depending on pot or pan. If you're more focused on boosting your score, you're going to want the bats which give you a great score boost for a general food spread. In the boss food spread, you only have two of those boss foods to choose from, and between the two, the Minotaur Tongue has the best stat boost in all categories. Now we're going to finish up with the old capital food pattern, listing food from left to right and top to bottom. With the tall beast meat, when cooked in a pan, will net you 10% HP, 1% attack, 3% defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 10% HP, 3% to attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time 16 seconds, burn time 7 seconds, and food respawn time of 25 seconds. With spices, salt is 1.2, wine is 1.4, 
and pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Salted pork, when cooked in a pan, will net you 10% HP, 1% attack, 3% defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 10% HP, 3% to attack, 1% to defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 24 seconds, food burn time, 5 seconds, and respawn time of 50 seconds. With spices, salt is 1.2, wine is 1.4, and pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Chicken legs when cooked in a pan will net you 12% HP, 2% attack, 4% defense, and 4% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 12% HP, 4% attack, 2% defense, and 4% to score. Full cooking time, 24 seconds, burn time, 5 seconds, and respawn time of 50 seconds. With spices, salt is 1.4, wine is 1.2, and pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, also capping out at 1.7. When mushrooms are cooked in a pan, they will net you 8% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 8% HP, 2% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 12 seconds, burn time 11 seconds, and respawn time of 11 seconds. With spices, salt and wine are both 1.3 times, and the pepper is a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Grains when cooked in a pan will net you 8% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 2% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 8% HP, 2% attack, 1% to defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 12 seconds, burn time 11 seconds, and food respawn time 12 seconds. With the spices, salt and wine are both 1.3 times, and the peppers 1.1 times boost your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Broad beans, when cooked in a pan, will net you 8% HP, 3% to attack and defense, and 3% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 10% HP, 3% to attack and defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 12 seconds, burn time 11 seconds, and respawn time of 12 seconds. With spices, salt and wine are both 1.3 times, and pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Potatoes cooked in a pan will net you 8% HP, 1% attack, 2% defense, and 1% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 6% HP, 2% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 12 seconds, burn time 11 seconds, and respawn time 12 seconds. With spices, salt and wine are both 1.3 times, and pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. When scorpions are cooked in a pan, will net you 10% HP, 1% attack, 3% defense, and 1% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 8% HP, 3% attack, 1% defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 16 seconds, burn time 7 seconds, and respawn time of 25 seconds. With spices, salt is 1.2, wine is 1.4, and pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, also capping out at 1.7. These next foods are only acquired through story dungeons, some by beating bosses, one of which from interacting with the stage. Doom beetle larva meat, the food with the purple stuff coming out of it, replaces the tall beast meat. Cooking in a pan will net you 8% HP, 3% attack, 2% defense, and 3% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 10% HP, 2% attack, 3% to defense, and 2% to score. Full cooking time, 16 seconds, food burn time, 7 seconds, and a food respawn time of 25 seconds. With spices, salt is 1.4, wine is 1.2, and pepper is a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. Red dragon meat is the best statted food in the game. It replaces the chicken legs. Cooking it in a pan will net you 34% to your HP, 18% to your attack, 10% to your defense, and 15% to your score. Cooking in a pot will net you 34% HP, 
10% attack, 18% to defense, and 15% to score. Cooking time is 24 seconds, burn time 5 seconds, and a respawn time of the whole cooking mini game. You only got one shot at the dragon meat and that's it. With spices, salt and wine are both 1.2 times, and pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.5. Wyvern meat cooked in a pan will net you 16% HP, 2% attack, 6% to your defense, and 3% to your score. Cooking in a pot will net you 16% HP, 6% attack, 2% defense, and 3% to your score. Full cooking time, 18 seconds. Burn time of 7 seconds and respawn time of 53 seconds. With the spices, salt is 1.4, wine is 1.2, and the pepper is a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.7. The Archdemon Heart replaces the Scorpions. Cooking in a pan will net you 20% HP, 9% attack, 3% defense, and 4% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 20% HP, 3% attack, 9% defense, and 4% to your score. Full cooking time, 24 seconds, burn time, 5 seconds, and respawn time of 67 seconds. With spices, salt and wine are both 1.2 times, and the pepper is 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.5. The Mycodid cap replaces the normal mushrooms, and according to Michael XC's guide, you can only get these from destroying the big mushroom cluster blocking the door in Wallace's Labyrinth in the Story Dungeon. When cooked in a pan, will net you 12% HP, 3% attack, 1% defense, and 9% to score. Cooking in a pot will net you 12% HP, 1% to attack, 3% to defense, and 9% to score. Full cooking time is 24 seconds, burn time of 5 seconds, and respawn time of 42 seconds. With spices, salt and wine are 1.2 times, and Pepper is a 1.1 times boost to your meal's overall stat values, capping out at 1.5. In the old capital general food spread, your best overall raw stat food pick is going to be chicken legs. It has the best stats for HP, attack, defense, and score, depending on if you use pot or pan. It has a long cooldown though, so you only have two shots at this food. Broad beans are also another great snag because they're one of the only foods after these updates that seem to have the same attack and defense values regardless of pot or pan. Along with that, they have a short cooldown period, so it's easier to snag this food even if you miss it. In the boss spread, red dragon meat, as mentioned before, is the best statted food in the game in all categories, but you only get one shot at this because it does not respawn. Next after the red dragon meat would be the arch demon heart. It gives a lot of HP, along with attack and defense depending on if you're using pot or pan. If we're counting the Myconid Cap from Wallace's Labyrinth, it has a really good score stat on a reasonable cooldown for a rare food. That's going to be about it for this cooking guide for Dragon's Crown. I know this one was a long time coming and I really want to let all of you that have been enjoying my videos know that I really appreciate y'all sticking around despite having literally no release schedule for things. I wanted to at least finish what I started before focusing on editing other stuff. As for my future editing projects, I'm going to make a detailed video soon on the future of my channel. But for now, here's the TLDR. There's three types of video projects I'm planning to do in the near future. Tutorial vids, similar to the Dragon's Crown videos that you guys know and love. Reviews and shout out type videos for underappreciated web comics and animations. And content videos from our streams. I'm going to be opening up a Ko-Fi page soon and may work on a Patreon as well. Any support I get from you all will go toward getting videos done faster and giving you all some control over the focus on some of our content. Regardless if you're helping me eat or not, I'm always going to be up for suggestions on how to make my channel better as well as better content. Thanks for all the support and I'll see you all in upcoming content and hopefully in our streams.